to TJD episode 73. We watched Frailty. I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Frailty, the 2002 horror mystery suspense film directed by Bill Paxton, starring Bill Paxton, Matthew McConaughey, and Powers Booth. Uh, The film deals with a father of two boys and his vision from God that he will be God's right hand in smiting the coming, the demons that are coming and, and the apocalypse that is about to descend on the world. It's up to him and a few select others who you don't meet, but it's up to them to stop these demons. And it deals with Matthew McConaughey's character, who was one of the boys when this was happening, telling the police, the FBI, hey, this is what happened. You know, and it goes from there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put out there right away. Spoilers, because as I mentioned, this is a horror mystery suspense movie. Mm -hmm. So there are some big giveaways. There may be some twists and turns with this film. It's on Netflix right now. Highly recommend by me. I'm just not going to give you my score, but I highly recommend this film. I would highly recommend it as well. That you you should go to Netflix and see this film. And then listen to our pod. But yes. So, spoilers. Run away now. Mm -hmm. If you don't want it ruined. I mean, you could just pause it. Well, yeah, you don't have to run. You you could pause it. (laughs) I mean, run away if you want. (laughs) Just leave your phone. Please please don't go. (laughs) They just drop their phone and run. We need to be... Yeah, drop your phone and run. (laughs) Oh, but... Preferably in a crowded public place. <laughs> so so Jake can get a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I wasn't even thinking of that. That'd be great. No, I was more implying it'd be, you know, viewed as an explosive device or something. Oh. But I like yours better. That would save me $900. Jake's phone got put on his list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright. Last warning. Okay, so this film, as either those of you who have seen the film or actually just skipping the spoiler section, just skipping to the spoiler section, holy fuck. Yeah. So, the father supposedly actually sees these demons. Right. And as it's pointed out at the end of the film, the son actually sees them. And I don't know if you noticed, the last time, before the father dies, the last time um, the boy... Adam is walking down the stairs. He stops and starts shaking on the stairs. Did you guys see that? Mm Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I didn't catch it the first time I watched it, which, granted, was almost 15 years ago, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, this movie's nuts. It's one of those that... Like, I don't want to say you judge a movie by the title, but, like, you just see frailty and you're like, oh... And you kind of see Matthew, uh, a half face of Matthew McConaughey and an axe buried into a stump and you're like, all right. All right. What what is this? Dude, I got to retrain my brain on (laughs) like not judging movies by the title because we've seen some pretty fucking good ones. American Beauty had no interest in watching that. Frailty? Meh. Like they're not, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang would have never saw it. Right. Yeah, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, if it wasn't for that, I really enjoyed Val Kilmer, and Iron Man had had come out or was coming out. I can't remember it. Iron Man 3? No, Iron Man, for Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh. With, was Iron Man... I don't I, think Iron Man was out no. yet. No. So I, I think it was Val Kilmer that brought me into Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and I just was like, wow, that film is amazing. Because I want to say Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was like 2006? I was still in high school, yeah. And I think so. Iron Man was like 2008. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I think Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is what helped him get Iron Man. Right. They were like, hey, you're not just a meth head. Hey, or, you're or doing... crackhead. You're doing something better than Ally McBeal. <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> Watching uh. Calista Flockhart do nothing. And Lucy Liu. Some... Dancing Chumbawamba Baby and whatever the fuck happened. I don't know. It was the 90s. Yeah. You could get away with a lot. 
I probably saw every episode of that show. <laughs> really? I don't know why. Why? I I had nothing to do. I was like, it's your like, friends. Yep. <laughs> Ally McBeal. Yep. Wow. I'm down for this. Even as a kid, words, I'm like, I don't really find her all that attractive, but I'm going to watch anyway. Words hey. that I thought would never come out of your mouth. <laughs> Did you also watch Gilmore Girls? No, I never saw that. I saw every episode of Dawson's Creek, though. I was a weird guy. <laughs> what the fuck was? <laughs> I mean, I have a pod where I talk about, you know, putting kids in a well and... Do you have a list, them. by the way, Jake? No, I don't make a list. <laughs> you just, whatever. You I'm more of a creature of, uh... How do I word it? You uh, see shitty people? <laughs> no, not even shitty people. Just whatever comes... Impromptu. A, whatever comes across my plate. Actually, no, I'm not eating them. That makes it sound worse. <laughs> Never tried it, though. I hate his liver. <laughs> <laughs> With a nice Shasta. A Shasta. <laughs> Truly terrifying. <laughs> They're like, where did you find a Shasta? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, just kill me now. I don't want to watch you drink that. What are you doing to yourself? Why shit on Shasta? I don't know. You just decided to. I enjoyed Shasta. <laughs> I had completely forgotten that Shasta was a thing until you mentioned it. Well, everyone had to drink. Every kid drinks Shasta at one point in time because their family just wants to save on pop. Yeah. I was going to say, Shasta's for <laughs> the people that dream of RC Cola. And that's really fucking sad. Uh, They've never had a Dr. Pepper in their life. They're drinking like Mr. Something. Dr. Thunder. Dr. Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> Some off Walmart brand, brand. Shit. <laughs> yeah, Heehaw and Mountain Mist. Yeah, Mountain Mist. We don't do Sprite. We got Sprit. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't mean to do a Southern accent. It just came out that way. <laughs> it is watching frailty. That Can we it. grape soda? No, we got this purple drink. <laughs> oh, I did enjoy Shasta Orange though, but it was orange soda. Yeah, you just like orange soda. You don't give a shit who made it. Nope. There could be Mexican hooker blood in there, and you're like, yeah, it's orange soda. Probably. We didn't care. It was sugary, and it tastes good. That's true. And it tastes nothing like oranges. That's also true. (laughs) Odd. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I got a pro that'll really, it'll give away the twist completely, but Mm -hmm. we've already, we, we already warned. That end part that adds that twist where you're like, okay, it's not just crazy bumfuck country people that, you know, it's not a crazy family. Who thought they had a vision from God. Right, because it shows the security footage and there's really, like, tracking shit that completely hides his face. And it face. moves up and down right. based on where he is on the screen. So you're like, well, fuck. And it also shows the visions and... Powers Booth reacts like, how did you know that? And you're like, well, the motherfucker did it. So now you're like, well, I'm all turned around. I'm turned around now. Because mm-hmm. the first time I saw it, I was pretty young. But I was like, holy shit, these people are crazy. But that ending, really, you're like, oh, fuck. When I saw it, I was either a sophomore or a junior in high school. And so it was around 05, 06. So I had, I had not heard this film. Or or four or five, so it'd been out for two or three years. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what this film was. Just we were we we went to the movie store, which don't exist now. But <laughs> Blockbuster? No, it it was a small town movie store. Oh, so it's even better. Yeah, and we're just like we want a horror film, and they said, "Have you ever heard of Frailty?" And we're like, "No." They're like, "I I I want you to see that film because we were in there like every week." And she's like, I want you to see that film. Props to her. Yeah. Don't you miss that about the video store, though? Mm -hmm. Where you'd be like, you know what? I've seen all this shit. Throw something at me. And they'd be like, uh, the porn's back there. (laughs) (laughs) Good to see you again, Jake. No, not not really. I was like 12. (laughs) (laughs) On a Tuesday? Yeah, they were making it in the back room. (laughs) They're like, we got you... (laughs) Wow, so you admit to be in, in child yeah. pornography. Netflix had nothing to do with the downfall of Blockbuster. Oh, shit. I, I shouldn't have named them. Hollywood Video, I mean. Wait, are they still around? Blockbuster? No, Actually, Hollywood Blockbuster Video. still is, but... 
Yeah, there's like six of them? Six or eight stores left. Most of them in Alaska. They've got them in Mexico still. And Texas. There are like two stores in Texas. The guy who owns all of them in Alaska owns two stores in Texas. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Still hanging on. I was going to say, what was the... Oh, movie gallery. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. It was like... I'm trying to think. Like... A red... All I know about movie gallery is one, they had the naming rights to Troy University football, their stadium. All right. And they also had a bowl game one time, I think, too. And I was like, is this really a good use of money? <laughs> is sponsoring a bowl game? I've never even heard of them. Yeah. They, there were, there were a couple in Lincoln. I know one in Beatrice. It was pretty much Hollywood video or a blockbuster. Except I think they did that one porn. Porn? I think so. Oh. But I don't know for sure. I think Blockbuster had porn. No, they didn't. No. That's I, I, that's what made them different, I think. Mm. They weren't like a sleazy video store? No. Hollywood video have porn? No. I couldn't tell you. I wonder how long we could talk about this dead uh, time period. But all small town video rentals had porn? Yeah. All the mom and pop shops. Because mm-hmm. that's Usually where they got their money. <laughs> where you walk in and they're like, I know what you like. Yeah, And they're like, it, here, make this one. We just made it last Tuesday. They had, they, <laughs> the whole make shit. Yeah. They have a special book you have to look through. and Really? Yeah. That that was a store back in Wilbur. I had some friends who worked there. Like, here, <laughs> shit, I had at, some friends. No, they says. did. They And they go, here's the book and just look at all these titles. And it's like a binder this thick. Wow. He, he still got the and, binder at his house. No. The place went under, so I don't care anymore, but... Under what? It went under. Yeah, I'm joking. Okay. That's the tie joke right there. Yep. Under the bridge. Downtown. Julie Brown? No. I was... Oh. God damn it. <laughs> Is where I drew some blood? Uh, Crips? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard a band R- called R- the Red Hot Chili Peppers? <laughs> 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 Son of a bitch. It's only one of their most popular <laughs> yeah, songs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Drew's the Blood, Crips. <laughs> Fly away on my... Honestly, it's been... Zephyr? Hitler? Yeah, let's no. move on. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Um, The one... And it's not really a con. I just don't think, like, Bill Paxton as a, is at his best acting in this film. Where is he... Like at his best, do you think? Tombstone, uh, Aliens, um, Club Dread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that may be where he's at his worst. Thanks for re- reminding me that exists as I well. I forgot. By the way, Super Trooper 2 comes out 420. Couldn't care less. Of 18. Could not care less. <laughs> really? Nope. I, I know it's not going to hold a candle to the original. That's why I couldn't. It, There's no way. I just Maybe hope it'll surprise you. I hope it's too. I oh. Did, oh, that surprised me how bad it was. <laughs> Still surprised though. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope it's not as bad as that. Oh man, that movie is awful. I didn't even really love the first one, to be honest. Super like, I, I, I thought it was funny. It had its moments, but like my issue was all my friends saw it like five times. That that's my issue as well. And so they quoted all the death, and by the time I saw it, I was like, yeah, I laughed, but. Right. It wasn't the same. That's unfortunate. People ruin things. Uh, see, I, that that movie held a special place in my heart. Like, Chappelle show, had I not watched it while it was happening, I probably would fucking hate it. Actually, I, I didn't see it while it was happening. I still laughed my butt off. Really? So, yeah. What about your ass, though? You no, I'd it stay detached. Well? Oh. Just my butt. I'm confused. <laughs> See, I was sitting on a donkey while I watched it. Mm, gotcha. That was fucking stupid. <laughs> and what, the rest of this pod hasn't been? No, it's been pretty bad. <laughs> uh, I got a pro. Okay. I think the child actors in this are actually pretty decent. Mm-hmm. I think Adam is not as good as Fenton. Fenton's way but, better. But Fenton's a little bit older, so I, I have to cut the kid some slack there. But... No, I was pretty impressed. Um, another pro, the twist 
in this where, where you figure out that it's an unreliable narrator is just nice. Like they don't make a big to do about it. They don't make like poignant music background choices or anything. He just, he says it. He go cause powers booth is just like, I'm confused. Why would he say he, uh, he would bury you here when you said you had to bury him here. When you told me in the office, you had to bury because the man you're not, you're right. talking to is Adam Meeks and not Fenton. Right. And that's it. They just kind of leave it there. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so they, they don't make like some grandiose, like they pause or anything. He just, I mean, they do flashback and show Adam mm-hmm. killing the guy. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so subtle. Yeah. It's like, it's, I get what you're saying. They didn't make a big, like, you know, over dramatic twist about it. It was mm-hmm. like, Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Like, got him. like I think back to sixth sense when you find out about Willis and then you have that, that hard violin going in the, in the, uh, I almost said xylophone, but not that. Like the piano, like there's <laughs> better a, movie. <laughs> there's an over like pronunciation of music in in that scene where he's like freaking out because he realizes he's dead. Well, they and, also go through like the whole movie and mm-hmm. show all the shit that like. Granted, did, you didn't pick up on it, and I thought it. I, no, I think that's really good as well. But it is a different kind of twist. Where it's like, look like, at how we twisted it. And that may be a big bad example because that was a huge, like, oh my gosh, twist that ran through the whole film. And which this is too, but th- this film doesn't try to be that. It just it was a small, unreliable narrator thing. Like, right. like we did Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's not about the twist, really. It's about... Well, I mean, it is about the twist. I, I guess I don't know how to word it, but they didn't they didn't make it a big fucking deal. Yeah. Like, it isn't the selling point of the movie. No. I think it's kind of just like, like cherries on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just, it's one of those things, again, where you think you're getting the truth, and you are, for the most part. Just there's one little lie in there. Mm-hmm. So. Can I just say that I... I absolutely love the way movies can mess with your mind like that or they'll they'll make you question the way you perceive something. Mm-hmm. And if they can do it multiple times in a movie, that just that blows me away. I think the big thing is like 95% of the movies you watch aren't going to do they that. They don't do that. Like they're I don't want to say they're all super predictable. But they all follow kind of a common storytelling theme where you're like, okay, if the narrator's telling us something, it's most likely going to be what's happening. Mm-hmm. But every now and then you got a movie that comes out where it's like, actually, I could do whatever the fuck I want. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with conventional storytelling. No. I, I, I like it just as much as anyone else, but it's what sets good movies apart from great movies in some like, senses. Yeah, I mean... Psycho has a great twist to it when you find out what's going on with Norman. So, Psycho has so many great things, but like that movie, like, do you even remember Janet Lee robbed a place at the beginning of that movie? I only know mm-hmm. that because I it's, that. it's it it it's pointed out all the time that like people forget she's not actually a good person. Right, she's on the run mm-hmm. before she even shows up there, and you think the movie's about her because she was kind of you know, a big deal. And it's like, no, the movie's not even about her and we're going to kill her like halfway through. Not or, even halfway through, I don't think. No. Nah. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Well, it's just, just like Scream with Drew Barrymore. Yeah, that's a perfect example. That right at the very big, well, I guess we are, these are all so old. Yeah. But, yeah, like, Drew Barrymore was like fucking huge at the time. So you're like, okay, uh, we, we got a horror movie with Drew Barrymore. She fucking died like 10 minutes into the movie. You're and that, like, what the fuck is going on? And that's where everybody, like, that's where I was like, well, fuck, this film can go anywhere. Right. <laughs> it just, yeah, every now and then you get someone that upends your expectations just completely. Invitation. And, the invitation, yeah. And I agree, there's nothing wrong with traditional storytelling, but I do think your mind kind of gets hotwired mm-hmm. to be in that mode. 
And it's good when something shakes you out of that mode, mm-hmm. and you're like, well, fuck. Like, I didn't even think of that happening. Well, and then, like, a first-time viewing, like, you... you First time viewing this, did you think Bill Paxson was nuts? I thought he was absolutely fucking crazy. I did. I thought he was nuts. But, yeah. Because you were even like, yo, he's supposed to kill his son. Who you thought was telling the story and ends up killing his dad. I just thought the way that, like, you know, he does the lay on hands thing to Mm -hmm. determine if they're a demon. Like, that, that just seems so fake to me. Like, the way, and they did the, the grandiose, like... Ooh, something's ba- something bad is happening, or you know, and he's mm-hmm. just trying to play it off like, "Ooh, this person's a bad person." Now we killed him. Right. I was th- either thirteen or fourteen when I saw this, mm-hmm. and I'd seen a lot of shit by then because I was like totally into movies and like. So watching this the first time, I was like, "Okay, he seems like a good dad. Like he really does seem like a good dad." And then it got all dark and weird and it brought religion into it and i was like holy fuck like this is not at all what i expected but i yeah i thought he was completely insane and i thought the angle was like well look how good of a guy he is like aren't you torn at you know hating him because he's obviously i mean at the time i'm like he's mentally ill like something's going on and he's dragging his kids into this mm-hmm. and it's all fucked up. And like thought, you're like the youngest is going with it because it's his dad. But right. then the older one's like, I know better. Right. And I thought that that's what it was. So then the ending, I was completely fucking blown away. I was like, what the, f-? I, I think I'd only seen probably a few movies that like had done that. I'd seen, uh, the usual suspects mm-hmm. and I'd seen seven. I'm pretty sure. So, like, I knew, but I hadn't... You never know going in, unless somebody ruins it And for something, like, you're like, wow, that was good. Why why don't more people talk about it? Like, everybody talks about Usual Suspects. Everyone talks about Seven. Everyone talks about Sixth Sense. No one talks about this film. I've never heard of this movie until you guys brought it up. Well, you had mentioned the title. Like, do you think it's a bad title? Or is it one of the titles that you're just like, "Eh, I'm not all that interested? In In terms of marketing, it's a fucking terrible... Title. And I mean, it doesn't really tell you any anything about the movie. No. no, and I think that's what hurts it. But Bill Paxton specifically wanted to keep that title because he they they the studio thought about changing it to In God's Hands, but then he felt that gave away too much. Yeah, and but I mean, at the same time, people would be like, "Oh, I get it," because the guy's the God's Hand killer. They just, like, put that together, but not actually, like, how Seven, the guy's killing people based on the Seven Deadly Sins. But, um, it doesn't give away the twist. But, he won frailty because frailty shows, like, the the frailty of difference between being human and possibly being a demon. Like, the, the frailty of what is right and wrong. Um, right. Of the mind, frailty of the mind, etc. So... I, th- I think in terms of like an introspective title it it works in in mountains yeah the problem is it doesn't grab someone that knows nothing about it like in god's hands that i can see a marketing team came up with that i don't think i'd like that title though me personally i think i don't want to say having god in the title would turn me off but i'd be like maybe not for me yeah, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, might, I might think it. I mean, it is a religious movie, but it's not at the same time. Like they're not. They're not preaching. Yeah, they're right. not pushing in an agenda or anything like that. It's 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 about people's beliefs, and seeing it's not visions. God's not dead. It's <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like I don't know if they would have named it that. My reaction might have been that, mm. but you know, like I don't know. Today is so much easier than back then because you can just go online and look all this shit up. And, like, I mean, at the time, you probably could have, but, like, we had dial-up, and I wasn't fucking going to bother with any of that. Was IMDb even a thing? I doubt it. I'm know. not sure. I could not tell you when it... You'd be having to do IMDb some... IMDb started. Some encyclopedia searching or something. I got all my movie info from that scrolling fucking channel. You remember that? Oh, the TV the Guide TV channel? The TV Guide channel. And it'd give you that little brief, like, one-sentence description. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh... Usually you're like, I'm going to jerk off to that side. <laughs> or like, wouldn't you hate it when you were like looking for a particular channel and it was just going up, 
just as you got there, so you had to yeah. sit there and wait for it to come back up again. Right. Kids these days will never know about that no. shit. Can you imagine? If you would have told me when I was you know, a TV young... TV Guide channel still exists. Does it really? If you would have told me when I was a kid, going through puberty, that at the touch of a button, I could look at pornography on a handheld device, my fucking hand and my dick would have exploded. Yeah. The hell you have to go through back then. <laughs> you would have hair literally growing on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> look like Robin Williams. A corpse. Ooh. Too soon? It's been like three years. <laughs> no. No, it hasn't. It's been three years. Yeah. Three years? Yeah. Isn't Get that the fuck, fuck out of isn't here. Isn't that fucked up? Yeah. Yeah. Love Robin Williams. But, as I say, he didn't have hair on his hand. He was a hairy guy. Yes, but I meant the palm. Oh. That's what they always used to say, is if you touch yourself, your hair would grow on your hand. Well, I was just making a hairy person joke. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, I understood your joke. I was thinking like the kid in Jumanji. He was, a, he was a monkey. Harry and the Hendersons? That's not Jumanji. I fucking hated that kid when he started turning into, into a monkey. He was such a whiny little bitch. Peter? Peter, yeah. He's always making that... <laughs> yep. He's turning into a monkey. Fuck him. <laughs> He's turning into we a all monkey, got Jake. problems. <laughs> we all have problems. I drank Shasta once. <laughs> yeah, because that compares to being turned into a monkey. That's pretty close. I think I'd rather get turned into a monkey. <laughs> oh... Man, I don't remember the last time I had Shasta. It's... I think that's the new unofficial drink of TJD. <laughs> no, don't say that until they pay us. Someone somewhere is like, our sales had more than doubled. <laughs> we... we sold one carton. <laughs> if, if Shasta actually came to us and said, will you pitch this, but you have to drink a can each pod, would you do it? Yeah. One Fuck can yeah. each pod? Yeah. How much are they paying? Like a hundred dollars. Are they gonna pay for the chemo? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no medical. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I'd probably do it. <laughs> and it has to be like every week it has to be a different one. So you have to like do Shasta grape. So I can't just find one I like. Yeah. <sighs> I guess. Shasta lime. They better be paying pretty decent for us to be drinking fucking Shasta weekly. Shasta holla at your boy. Nobody's listening. No. no. Um, I'll tag him though. <laughs> One of our followers will be like, what the fuck do they tag Shasta for? <laughs> As if anyone looks at anything. Uh, but, the, okay. So, now there is one thing I... I saw brought up by somebody on a board about this film. Okay. And I usually don't care about people's, like, Opinions. Yeah, opinions. But I I meant more, like, their conspiracy thoughts or whatever. But besides the Titanic was the Britannica. But anyways. um, (laughs) Or, no, it's Olympus. Um, Did you say Titanic? Like, thinking Encyclopedia Britannica? Well, there was a Britannica. But I forgot it was the Olympus that the actual conspiracy theory is. Um, God, keep your theories straight. I know, right? So many of them. Anyways, that it wasn't God. Like, he wasn't killing demons exactly, but he, they were working for demons. The people were working for demons? No, like Bill Paxton was working for demons. How? Why? Like, he was being lied to. And he was... Like, he was actually mentally insane. Okay. Because of a demon. And so he was being fed lies. So... But why would demons want to kill other demons? And how would a But demon... they just want him to kill people. But how would the demon be able to see other people's sins? Those people didn't actually commit sin. Like, they may have committed sins. But he made it seem like they made terrible sins and he just wanted them to kill him yeah but what about that fbi agent though yeah see and that's where i'm like okay there are some plot holes with this so not not everybody's like what is that called when somebody has their own theory about that's like films? your opinion man yeah <laughs> that's the technical definition. yeah <laughs> yeah 
not all their theories make sense. And that's why I thought too, I was like, well, it, I could see up to a point where that makes sense until like, yeah, he touches the FBI agent and he's like, nah, you killed her. Cause he pretty much admits to killing his mother. Right. right? It's like, no one knew that. Yeah. So. And he's like, how did you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, fuck something's up. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that scene, I have a minor con. They don't let you know that the ordained people have the ability to drain somebody's energy. Or not energy, but like, it makes them tired Yeah, when they touch them. It, 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 yeah, it drains them. But like Jake pointed out, you never know because... They were all tied up. They yeah. were always... But I always found it to be interesting that they... Those people never want, like, I mean, understandably, you're tied up, you don't want to be touched. But, like, that first girl, she was, like, fighting really hard, like, don't... They all they all kind of recoiled in, like, fear. Mm-hmm. And then, like, even she was like, oh, God. Like, you could always see, like, in their eyes, too, like, they know he saw what happened. Yeah. Like, they knew he knew. Like, they were, they were almost, like, tormented, like, worried about the sin, their own sins, because they knew somebody was coming after them. Mm-hmm. But the only reason I knew was because they had McConaughey and the FBI agent had that weird struggle. And then all of a sudden McConaughey comes out on top and he's handcuffed. Yeah, and he just picks him up and... He he takes the key, undoes it. Yeah. I don't know. It's something small, but I think they could have at least touched on it somewhere in the movie. Like, like, because, like, the last guy they do... Um, that is the first kill for Adam, uh, that Barry guy, who, which, what was his sin? Did you see? It didn't show his. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't think it did. Which guy? The guy that told his wife to shut the fuck up and they went out in the garage. Oh, yeah, yeah, they didn't say what he did. I'm assuming something with domestic abuse or... My guess, too. But he touches him and he doesn't hold on very long, though. He's just like, okay, it's time. And that was it. Like, but he, he undoes the tape and the guy's like yelling then, screaming, but you don't see him like get tired or anything, so. Mm-hmm. I got a pro. Hmm. I'd say how uh, ambiguous it keeps itself up until that twist. Like, yeah. like the, the one that comes to mind is the old man. Where he sees Fenton out there pretending he's looking for his dog or his cat or something under the car. And he says, really kind of fucking creepy. He's like, what are you doing out here, little boy? And immediately you're like, stranger danger. Like, no. (laughs) Yeah. And you're like, there's something off about this. So then when, you know, Bill Paxton touches him and he's like, oh, he's been murdering kids. You're like, I kind of fucking thought that. Like, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but that motherfucker looks like he might have murdered some kids. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and like I don't know the, and it kind of just keeps building but it stays ambiguous enough like I always thought the first girl you're always like fuck I don't know like it could mm-hmm. it could go either way because she's genuinely terrified and yeah it, it just keeps going and you get the old man that's kind of fucking creepy and, and then you get to the one guy who he you, you see right away he is an asshole he's like shut up bitch it's like well this guy seems guilty of something. Yeah, but, but I don't know what that guy's been through. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> we don't. I don't want to judge him on one interaction. <laughs> nah, he's probably a piece of shit. <laughs> you know how you know he's a piece of shit is he had a motorcycle. Mm. I'm just kidding. Oh. Because he was on God's uh, list. My uncle actually runs a motorcycle shop, so... Oh, well. Yeah. But I'm a piece of shit, so maybe it checks out. Maybe there's logic there. <laughs> Bad people drive bikes. That's like your opinion, man. It's not even my opinion. Uh, that, but what I love, too, is they just throw it in there barely. Like, when they're doing the uh, second uh, person on the list, and they're just sitting in the van, just waiting for the guy to come back out. And he mentions, though, it's like it's broad daylight when we get caught. And he's like, no, God will God'll blind people for us. And then at the end, when Matthew McConaughey is at the FBI, all the tapes 
fuzzy right where his face is. No one can seem to remember who he, what he looked like. I mean, he even meets the FBI agent face to face and he just, nope, I need to talk to you about your brother. And he's like, Fenton? He goes, yes. That didn't even dawn on me that, like, the people don't even remember what he looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, they're asking dude. him to describe and he's like, I, I shook his hand. I, I don't remember I anything. just thought they were generally forgetful. And that's why he made sure he was like, you mean Fenton? Because he, he, he went in there under the name Fenton. And he's like, you mean Fenton? And he goes, yes. So he's like, I'm in the clear because I went in as Fenton. <laughs> the whole town just has a gas leak and yeah. they're all but fucking delusional. Then you also figure out the secretary is his wife and she's the one who answered the phone call. In the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And she she said, "What's Fenton doing there? He stole an ambulance, mm-hmm. and she was all about it." Yeah. yeah. So disturbing. Mm-hmm. Like a different kind of disturbing, which is refreshing. So then, does like like I said, it was weird. The ending, like the final ending shot of his wife with him, and she's like, "Praise God!" And he looks up. And then, you know, he kisses her, and then they walk in, and it has, like, this weird, ambient, dark, brooding mm-hmm. music, usually that you would see with, like, a horror ending, but if you were to believe that he's actually doing God's work... He'd be the hero. He'd be the hero. So that's why I'm like, this is confusing. Like, it, it plays two tones. It's like mixed messages. Mm-hmm. Wasn't, well, I mean... Calling it frailty is that kind of just like oh the perception yeah like it, it that's blurs true. the line what, what is right and wrong yeah so do you guys agree with the the ordainment to kill supposedly know, wicked people I mean like it's just to see like nobody remembers him and all those videotapes or whatever not working. You have to think something is going for him. Right. And he's killed how many... Like, you saw the Rose Garden. How many people has he killed? The only reason they knew God's Hand Killer exists is because Fenton wanted it to be known. But even he couldn't let it be known. Like, God kept interfering with... Because when he referred to Fenton, he, like, because Powers Booth, like, there were only six killings or too many graves here. He goes... Fenton's victims, there were only six. He said victims. He said, my demons, I bury here. Right. Fenton kept his in his basement as a trophy. He thought if he killed people, he could actually reveal what was going on. But no, God kept covering it up. So, no matter what length he went to, it seems he couldn't do anything. All he could do is leave little notes, but that was it. So you're, I don't, I don't, that's the part I didn't understand was like, so would he leave the body and then the body would just be gone? I don't know. You don't really know the extent to which he went to try to reveal it. Because that was such like a small part because that was mentioned in like passing. I mean, you would, uh, I would just assume that he did everything he could. Yeah. And no matter what he did, some bullshit would always just take care of it. Because I think the first note said... This will be the only body you'll you'll find or you'll probably find. It said one of those on that note. And because they said they found the first body, but then they didn't find the other five that they knew of. And so I think he went through everything, but God either told Adam where they were, they were, or, or and just so, or they just weren't able to be found because God was hiding them. Mm hmm. So, but Fenton couldn't come out and just do it because then nobody would listen to him. He was trying to, he said, Adam admitted Fenton was just trying to bring me out. So, and it almost kind of seems that way too when, you know, he, Fenton originally goes to the sheriff when they're young and he Mm -hmm. said, Hey, like you got to come here and they go in the shed and nothing's there. And yep. But he says, uh. The father said, it's your fault. I had to kill. He said, he told him, he said, if you tell anyone, somebody innocent will die. And it's true. Yep. So that's why, I think that's another reason is Fenton's like, I can kill because I've killed before. But I can't cause another innocent to die 
So that's why he was trying to leave clues. Mm -hmm. It's because he couldn't just tell them. So So you think he really, he was getting lists from God? I think he was trying to maybe kill bad people, but they were just victims because they weren't on an actual list. Because, like... You're talking about Fenton? Yeah. Because Adam was getting lists from God, but... And that's why he said I had to wait for Fenton to appear to be able to do it. He knew he'd have to because I think that's probably what his dad whispered to him at the end. Yeah. Is you will have to kill Fenton. Or go kill that motherfucker on the floor over there. Yeah. That that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right after you untaped him, he was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> like you were there. Like you were almost out. Yeah. You're like, shit, this guy just killed his dad with an axe. Oh, shit, he's letting me out. Oh, fuck, that other kid's got the axe. <laughs> and I'm dead. I don't think he thinks, oh, I'm dead. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, should have had a Shasta. <laughs> but, um, because Fenton couldn't say anything, otherwise innocent people would die. Um, so he felt that pressure. And so I think he started trying. Adam always referred to Fenton's as victims, not as demons. Mm -hmm. So he made that clear. The writer made that clear. They were victims. Because they were humans. Which is really weird walking that line. Because if those people were bad, then they... But maybe they weren't demons. Like, it wasn't something that was bad enough. I don't know. Don't you think this whole thing could have been explained? What do you mean? Like, the second guy, had they just been... Well, I guess it was undocumented. That's mm -hmm. where it gets fuzzy. Mm -hmm. They didn't know he was killing kids, or else the cops would have got him. Yep. It's just, so, so put yourself in Fenton, the real Fenton's shoes. Do you believe you're dead? No, I, I, I understand. Like, Adam believes because he sees it. Right. Which, there's also like the whole, you know, part of all, every religion is, you know, seeing isn't always believing. Like, sometimes you don't have to see to believe. That's what but, faith is. Yeah. Is you taking it at face value. Mm hmm And... Adam, it, I don't think, like, I don't think they were much of a holy family until, the, like, because Fenton, at least, wasn't. Because when Adam singing that, you know, joy, the joy, joy down in my heart song, Fenton's like, I don't want to sing that piece of crap song. And I just, he, they don't seem to be a prayer family. Like, they're, but they're watching fucking Davy, whatever. Goliath, but uh, that was also all the TV you had. So, I mean, you had three channels, and I'm sure that was the only cartoon on on Saturday. <laughs> God, what a time to be alive. <laughs> oh, Davey. Did you ever see Moral Oral? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You like the moral? What a great fucking show. <laughs> Wasn't the dad gay or something? Uh, probably. I That's, think so. Sounds I about that right. Was the running joke. Or he was, like, he came off as it. Something like that. Yeah. So... God, brilliant show. But yeah, I I I understand Fenton not believing because he was also shown like God told him, "Hey, your son's going to betray you. You need to end him when I tell you." Like he told him to end him. He was on the list originally, right? And then he, it's kind of like Wanted, where there was a list. Oh. Yeah, they're checking it twice. Mm -hmm. Wanted. You know yeah, the, the Angelina Jolie movie. James Remember how Chris James Pratt's McAvoy. in that movie? Oh yeah, he yeah. Is. He gets hit with yeah. the face with a keyboard, and no one knew who the fuck that was at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I fucking hated that guy. <laughs> Seeing that movie, I'm like, that guy's the biggest douche I've ever seen. He'll never be anything. And now he's Star Lord. Yeah, they married at Anna. No, Paris, they're separated. Anna oh well, they were. Yeah, until just recently. Good for him. Mm hmm. Right. What else do we think? I, I oh to finish my thought, I I think Matthew McConaughey is a hero in this film. Like, it's a bold I, take. Cotton. It is a bold take, like to say that. But I think he is. If they're actually wicked people. Mm hmm. I think he is seen in this universe, in this film universe. I think he's doing God's work. 
Well, let let me let me ask you this. We're gonna twist it a little more. What if it's not God telling him? What if it's that, the devil telling? Him? That's why. That's why I said earlier was that that theory He's working for a demon. Yeah, it was working for a demon, and and then you're and right. He was killing other demons. No, he was killing just people. Like the demon wanted him to just kill people. Like if they actually didn't do that shit. Yeah, he was just saying kill this person. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not even talking about that. Let's say Satan contacts him. And says, I need you to send me my disciples or whatever. They're going to be on my side, but I need you to bring them to me. So he's still carrying out that work, but it's different. Is he a hero then? Because he's doing the same thing. He's oh, just doing I it. see. And he's adding yeah. soldiers to Satan's army. Right. So is he a hero then? You didn't think of that, did you? Mm. Look at him. <laughs> that That is a tough one. But at the same time, like, the whole thing for Armageddon is that Satan comes to Earth, so he would want his forces on Earth. You're talking real Bible now. Yeah, real yeah. Bible. I, that's yeah. above my pay grade. But. Okay. But I'm just saying, like, I. but your point is a good one. Is he, I mean, that's that's kind of like how the trap old Ghost Rider fell under, was it was always like, why is this, why is this uh, demon destroying, like, Mephestos or you know Marvel's devils, right? Bad things. Well, then they did twists either in the nineties or in two thousands that he was actually an angel that was driven mad by Mephesto, so he had that innate angel ability that he never forgot. He just forgot where he came from, and that's why he was always hunting down demons. Mm-hmm. So spirit of vengeance. But I'm saying, no, I know, is it. Because you know what team you would play on? Yeah. like So you wouldn't view him as a hero if it was flipped that way? Mm, probably not. Okay. Would you? Or do you view him as a hero at all? In the context of the movie and what he stands for, it, yeah, he's viewed as a hero. Okay. So if you flipped it, and it's Satan instead, then no. So it's your own personal morals that come into play. Yeah, sure, but Royalty. I mean, which is fine. That's what makes the movie interesting. But I'm just the, asking questions. No, yeah, but that's the way you look at like any movie. Like, oh, well, you know, did you like Justin Long's character yourself in Tusk? I'm sorry, I didn't. I was, yeah, I was yeah. like Justin Long's character in Tusk. No, and that's because you personally, with your morals and your values and beliefs. Genuinely think he's a fucking terrible person. But I'm talking on a bigger level than that. Like, he's... Like, this movie, he's carrying out what he truly believes is right. Mm. So I'm what saying... What has been ordained to him. Though. Right. So I'm saying the flip of that, it's the same thing. He's doing what he truly believes in his heart is right, but he's doing it for someone that we view, or would view, you know, presumably as evil. So it's... You know, mm-hmm. it, it isn't even really so much what he's doing, it's what he's doing it for. I don't know, just a thought. No, mm-hmm. it it's a good thought, and I think that's kind of maybe where that theory meant to go, and it didn't... He just didn't word it well? Yeah. Yeah. So, because what if he was actually doing the work of the devil, but just sending his minions back to him? Right. So... I mean, that's kind of even what Constantine does. Like, Constantine's like a tortured soul that sends demons back, but he himself has been to hell. Right. He's but, the cleanup crew. Yeah. Great movie. I actually really enjoy that film. Yeah. So, got a lot of shit, but I really liked it. I haven't seen it in 12 years. Holds up. It, it does. You never remember Shia LaBeouf's in it, though. Yeah. You don't really need to. Every time it gets to that part, I'm like, oh yeah, you're in this. You didn't <laughs> well, need to be. As I say, he shows up within the first ten minutes. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> he didn't need to be there. No, he didn't. But they were trying to get that even Stevens viewing audience. Yeah. All 1,200 people? I don't know who watched even Stevens. I never did. Everybody. Really? Did you? No. Oh. So you're not... So I wasn't anybody. <laughs> But were you everybody? No, I never really watched Disney Channel shit. As a kid, even. Oh, do we want to do scenes? 
What an odd confession. <laughs> uh, sure. All right. Um, I'm going to do one, but I'm going to stay away from the twist, actually. There was one scene I actually really enjoyed in this, and I forgot about it until I rewatched this. And that's when uh, his father finally gets the list. And he, he rolls under a car. God. Looks like he's about to do the oil change. I was, I was going to pick this. Damn, I thought you'd go. Okay. No, that's a great scene. It is. And and the car transforms into a cathedral. Like the the base of the car transforms into the cathedral. And then you, you have the Archangel Michael coming down with his flaming sword. And he bes- and like it's funny because then it cuts away where you see Bill Paxton under the car. And like you see sparks flying all around him. But like everybody just walking around. But he just sitting there, laying there, motionless. And it just like, and then it cuts back to what he's viewing, and he then all of a sudden starts writing down the list, and it's like, wow, that was mm-hmm. a great, great shot, right? Great way of doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the music was mm-hmm. pretty good there. Yep, kind of biblical, but also sound like, like maybe a movie where an alien is fucking showing up out of nowhere it, mm-hmm. it would be fitting there too it was i don't know it was something strange. you could see in maybe prometheus yeah um fuck i'd probably say it's not like the most exciting scene but it said a lot about fenton's character to me anyway was when bill paxton made him dig that giant fucking hole mm. and he gets his hands all busted up and he's out there and he, he's Telling his younger brother, like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, this shit is fucked. You don't realize it, but I, I want you to come with me. And he's, you know, the younger brother's just gone. He's in it. He's not gonna convince him. And he's out here, just, he gets his hands all torn up. And Bill Paxton, you know, is out watching TV with the younger one. And he's out there eating dinner. And he comes in, and he's, you know, trying to, uh, I guess, make it right. And sees his hands are all busted up. And he's like, why didn't you wear the gloves? And I always took it like he didn't wear the gloves because he didn't want to be anything like his dad. Mm -hmm. And he knew what the gloves were and he didn't want to be part of, like it's symbolic kind of. Yeah. And he was just kind of like, fuck your gloves. And it just shows him and he says, you know, I dug every day and night for... Was it five days? Yep, and then on the sixth. And it shows him and he's he's never wearing the gloves. He -hmm. just digs it. And, yeah, like, it, it just says a lot about his character. He's hard-headed, but he's also standing up for what he believes. Mm-hmm. And he believes that his dad and his brother are crazy. Well, he believes his dad is crazy and his brother just is being brainwashed. Right. That was a cool scene. Yeah. Just him standing up above, above that dirt pile and he's yeah. like, I fucking did it with no help. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't, and need, he's I didn't like, need your gloves. And he goes, I, you didn't pray once? Nope. Yep. Uh, I'd probably say this. My favorite scene was. I, I wouldn't even say it's my favorite scene. I just it, it it's kind of a scene where it, it kind of drives home the whole misdirection, and it's where he he reported uh, he had reported his dad to the sheriff, mm-hmm. and after that, after the sheriff leaves, uh, his dad goes, "I can't trust you anymore." Uh, so you're going to have to stay in the cellar until I can trust you again. And literally picks him up, forces him down into the cellar, and locks him down there. And through the course of, oh, I don't know, a few weeks, he said, McConaughey says he doesn't even remember how long it was. I thought it was a week. Yeah. Well, yeah. at first it was a week. No. And yeah. His, his, and then he was. Well, yeah. his brother comes up to him and, you know, he's trying to talk to him again and said, man, we need to get out of here. Like, come with me. And he goes, no, dad says I can only bring you this one cup of water um, a day. Oh, we can't feed you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll try and bring you more water if I can. Mm-hmm. And so you just, you see Fenton just sit there and just like agonize. Like what a horrible dad to sit and leave your kid without any food for a whole week. Right. And then his dad pops up the the trap door and he goes, so did you talk to God or did you see God? And he goes, there is no God. That was pretty good. I will say that uh, 
The one shot that I thought was kind of bad. The head floating in darkness. Yeah. I was like, that was a weird transition. I didn't like that. And then there was another scene. I think it's a scene where he's he runs out of the shed to the sheriff. And, and you and, can tell he's pretending to yeah, run. Yeah, pretending to run. And then they show a clip of his shoes running. And Yeah, yeah. That, that was bad. But, I mean, it was a very limited budget movie. Right. Which I was going to get into. Um, this film was budgeted at $11 million. Damn. And it grossed 17 So, um... It did that poorly. Yeah. Wow. So, I think it was only released in three countries, though. The United States, Germany, and Italy. And also, I was wrong. The one thing I looked at said 2002. So, maybe it was released um, limitedly and then was wider in 2002, but it was originally released in November of 2001. So... Uh, Roger Ebert singled... This film out, though, giving it four out of four stars. That's extraordinary work declaring that its depths, if not only unexpected story turns, but also implications hidden at first that make it even deeper and more sad. So, and it's also been known to be called an underrated gem. Uh, Film has a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, 78% user review. Uh, Metacritic was... This would go back. Metacritic is 64 and 7.3 on IMDb. Drew, this was your first time seeing it. Would you consider it underrated? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, I would. I and, do, I'd agree. Um, and then the very... Uh, Bill Paxton said when he was doing this film, he originally had it edited, that he was going to show all the crimes as he touched the people Mm. but he showed it to james cameron because they worked together on aliens right and he said no make that the twist show it all at the end that's great fucking advice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that would have taken all the punch out of it i think yeah i agree i mean it because then you're not you're like okay he is actually seen like you would Yes, it would have brought like a more conflicted view to the film. Like, is he actually seeing this until you see that his son says he also saw it? Like, mm-hmm. well, with... he did say that he was. He's like, oh yeah, I did see it. And they're like, but, no, he didn't. Yeah, like because he said, oh, I have a list. And he's like, did you make did you make this list or did God give it to you? And he had to admit. Right. So you could have been like, oh, he just says he saw it. But so they left that doubt in there. Right. Mm -hmm. It's ambiguous, which is what I was saying. That's why it's Mm -hmm. good. Because if you show the audience that he sees it, you're automatically on Bill Paxton's side. Yep. But by doing it this way, you're like, fuck. Like, I don't really know. Until the end, then the end pretty definitively says, like, obviously some shit's going on. Um... The uh, axe, though, it says Otis on it. And they focus on it a lot. Yeah. And I actually thought it was kind of funny. Um, It's got to be a reference to something. (laughs) Some have thought uh, that it stood for only the innocent survive. Others think that his first name was Otis. Who? The dads. The dads. Oh, yeah. Did they ever say his name? I don't think so. No, but they... But he found it in the middle he, of yeah, nowhere. Yeah, he plucked it out of a that's farm why, in the middle of nowhere. That's... It just says Otis. So if that's his first name, I mean, that could have been anybody's first name. And remember, it was shown from God. Oh, I see. Okay. And so that's why he walks into so the barn. So it's like, what are the odds there's an axe here with your fucking name on it? Mm-hmm. In the middle of this dilapidated barn. Shit, if I found an axe that said Jake, we're going to town. <laughs> I'd be like, God spoke to me. <laughs> Are we like, sure it's not the devil? Yeah. Someone um, spoke. That's all that matters. Jake's like, Satan he also, is my God. <laughs> um, Less talking, more axing. And then Paxton also put the name Otis on it to make sure that people knew it was an heirloom. So, like, you knew when Matthew McConaughey had the axe, it was the same axe. Right. Passed down. Mm-hmm. Um... Then there was one other thing. Uh, where was it? Oh, yeah. Osama Bin Laden does make an appearance in this on the FBI Most Wanted board. So I thought he meant as a person. No. Like, what the fuck are you talking no. about? He he also kind of wanted Otis, the, the axe, to be like kind of like Christine is a car. 
uh, Cujo is a dog. Right. Otis is an axe. Mm-hmm. So Rosebud is a sled. Um, What's his name's fucking baseball bat? Mm-hmm. Walking Dead. Oh, Negan. Yeah. Oh, What's I it called? I, I think it's Sandlot. Uh, Lucille. Yeah. Sometimes we name our weapons. He also supposedly packs in while they were doing filming locations, like they were doing scouting. He found a homeless man that actually owned the axe and had carved Otis into it because that was the homeless man's name. And he bought it from him. Supposedly. I don't know how much I believe that because who would want to buy an axe from a... A homeless man? Yeah. Well, if I wanted to get an axe from a homeless man... (laughs) <laughs> like, let me buy that from you before you bury it in me. Uh, Not that all homeless people are angry and violently ill. <laughs> Just most of them. Um, <laughs> anything else? About- nope. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, which also now, knowing you guys have never found Tombstone, that is a stay tuned because I said Bill Paxton was in Tombstone, or Powers Booth was in Tombstone, and you both said you had never seen it. And I kind of died a little inside. Always wanted to see it. I've heard Val Kilmer's fucking great. Val Kilmer is the bomb. In Phantoms, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for it. No, uh, Val Kilmer's amazing. Kurt Russell is amazing. Sam Elliott. It's an all-star cast, and it's a great film. That is definitely a stay tuned. Um. Reviews. Yep. Reviews. Go Sorry. for it. So yeah, I saw this film a couple years after it came out. Had no clue. Just a pure recommendation from the person who owned the uh, the video store, and I was blown away. I loved the twist. I I loved the religion aspect of it. The the ambiguity that Jake mentioned. That you're just like, is this is this real? Is it not? I'm. Man, I don't know who to trust. And McConaughey's storytelling is great. Uh, Paxton did a great job for his first director debut, you know. And I, I just, I couldn't. This film stuck with me with how subtle it was with its twists as well. Like they're just like, yeah, this is happening. We're not gonna make a big ado about it, but here you go. And. It just kept you guessing up until pretty much the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if if what he's telling is the truth. And then that unreliable narrator gets thrown in. And it, even though they pretty much told the whole truth except for one little lie, that actually turned out to be a big lie. And it, it just is a fun, great, suspenseful film. And that's why we tried recommending you saw this before you listened to us. Or, and if you, for some reason... You didn't go watch it now. Hopefully, we didn't ruin it for you, but it probably will be. <laughs> still good, I think. Yes, it's still a great film. I had seen this film and it was great, like rewatching it. Like I mentioned, when Adam walks down the stairs, I didn't notice it when I originally watched it that he was shaking before you. So you're like, wait, now as I knew, I was like, oh, he does actually see it. They put that in the film. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, it, great film. I give it an eight. Um, yeah, what else could we say? Uh, it's a surprising movie. Uh, you, you see the title Frailty, and you go into it blind, and you're like, I, I don't know what this is about. It's Bill Paxton, and your immediate reaction is, well, he's obviously off his fucking rocker. <laughs> and uh, it kind of reveals itself to be deeper than that, and a little twistier than you anticipated, and it makes you think oh shit like what is good and what is bad and uh not every movie does that it's it's a special thing and like you said it it does resonate it definitely resonates after you see it and it's kept with me over the years but i think a lot of the acting is really good um i think the kid actors are pretty great except for the younger ones not as good but he's younger so I'm, i'm cutting him slack there um Paxton, I think, is about as good as he could have been. Like you said, he's he's not really a leading man, but I don't even think this movie really I'd consider him the lead. It's kind of McConaughey, just narrating, taking you through the story, and Paxton's kind of flashback and mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Paxton just feels right as a flashback. I don't, I don't know. I think he makes a great father figure. He was a great dad in this. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, he was phenomenal. And that's 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 part of it. Like all this horrible shit mixed with. Like, we didn't talk about it, but they have dismembered body parts in garbage bags that these kids are hauling around. And, like, there's a point where he drops the bag in the hole, and Paxton's like, no, 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 you gotta... The the way I saw it, here's how it works. And he fucking unfurls a head or something. It's off camera. And you're like, Jesus Christ, these kids have seen some shit. But, I don't know. The, The thing is, if it's under the guise of you're doing God's will, it's like, fuck. Like, I don't know. But it's... It's good. It, it's a, it's a head-scratcher. kind of makes you think. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd give it a 9. I, I think other than a couple technical things and, you know, budget probably restraints, mm-hmm. holding it back just a little bit, I, I think it's super entertaining, and I do think it's underrated. Uh, this is my very first time seeing this. I had no interest in seeing this, or I hadn't even really heard of it, but you guys kept mentioning Frailty, and I was like, I've never heard of this movie, like, the title doesn't sound all that interesting, but I've come to learn that, like, when you guys, like, come together and agree on something, that's scary. <laughs> um, but, no, like, you guys you guys kept talking about how good it was, and, like, it's a thriller, like, that shit is right up my alley, so I, I, I figured I'd probably get a kick out of this. And uh, I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, You guys said McConaughey, and I was like, okay, so, like, McConaughey is usually, like, a lead guy, but really wasn't, he he was more so the narrator throughout most of the story. I, not to interject too much, but you were saying it, and I was thinking about it, he does have very small screen time, if you think about it. McConaughey? Yeah. Yeah, so especially for that time period, you're like, McConaughey kind of took... Like we were talking with Drew Barrymore, it kind of you're like McConaughey's. He just kind of took a back seat, yeah. yeah, and let Paxton, Bill Paxton, drive for most of the. Say, for a film that's about an hour forty, he was maybe on screen for what twenty five minutes. Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. Yeah, um, but yeah, I thought I was. I thought I was gonna get like McConaughey the whole the whole movie, and it's. I wasn't expecting it to be a flashback. I guess. So it was it was nice to see I don't know that per, the perception that I had of the movie change as it went on and not only just what I thought it was going to be but how it unfolded too and that's what's so cool about some of the movies that we do like this we it it's just awesome to see crazy shit happen mm-hmm. I'm a big fan mm-hmm. of that like with thrillers and when that shit happens man it's something special. Um, but no, I, th- I genuinely thought most of the cast did a great job. I wasn't the biggest fan of, uh, of Adam, the kid, but you know, we usually give kids a pass. Um, I thought Fenton did a great job though. Yeah. That kid was great. Mm hmm. Uh, but all things said, uh, if you're a fan of thrillers, I think you'll definitely dig this. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and it's, is genuinely entertaining. The twists were, were crazy, man. I, I was definitely not expecting that. Um, I give it an 8.4. Solid choice. Yeah, great choice, Ty. Yeah, and I'm probably calling it right now. Probably do Tombstone next. So, you got that to look forward to. So, don't watch that. 76 is Tombstone. Yeah. I'll go watch it tonight. I'll kill you. So, you're picking Contact, right? Yeah. Contact? Oh, it is my pick, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, actually, I I had one in mind that I'm going to put on the back burner, and I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to hear shit about it. <laughs> Contact? No. <laughs> no, it was a new one that I've never mentioned, actually, that would have brought Kevin Bacon back. Ooh. But we'll we'll hold off. Tremors? Because, no, not Tremors. Uh, Footloose? I, no. I, I watched a movie not that long ago that, uh, it, uh, it angered me. I know, but I, I, I'm recommending it because by the end of the movie, it had done something not a lot of things do. It had won me over, which never happens. Usually once I get in that mode, that's where I'm going to stay. But it fucked with my head. Like, in, in a storytelling sense, it, it's one of those, 
not even an unreliable narrator. It's one of those movies that focuses on something that makes you think that's what the movie is about when there's this other thing going on. And it blew my fucking mind, literally. I don't, I don't want to overhype it, but it, it's called Nocturnal Animals. It's directed by Tom Ford, who's actually like a clothing and cologne guy. Yeah. And Joan Hall's in that, right? Jake Gyllenhaal's yeah. in it. Uh, Amy Adams is in it. Isla Fisher is in it. Hmm. Sold. Uh, Michael Shannon is in it. Sold. Yeah. Does he have wings? Maybe. <laughs> You'll have to f- oh. find out. But let, let me just say, the beginning of this movie angered me to no fucking end. Because, uh, I don't know if I've said, I don't really like David Lynch. And it totally reveals itself as, like, David Lynch-ish. And I, my, my personal opinion on David Lynch is he's not really a great... I would catch shit for movie people for this. I don't think he's a good storyteller. What David Lynch does... Yeah, who's David Lynch? David Lynch does um, Eraserhead... And he did Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, that's And it's you. very yeah. out there. Like, he's a great surrealist. Like, if you want to see weird shit and, like, wax poetic on what it all means, he's great for that. But I don't like it. I can't do it. I can only do it for so long. And he makes entire movies about that. The only exception, and it's barely an exception, is Mulholland Drive. Because it's just so fucking weird, but it manages to tell a mostly coherent story throughout. So he he's just he's he's something I don't like. So when I saw qualities of that, I was immediately like, "Fuck, I I'm not liking where this is going. It's too fucking weird and out there." And you'll know. I'll even tell you the beginning opens with obese women that are naked that are dancing around, and you're like, "What the fuck does this have to do with anything?" And by the end, it had won me. And by the end, I had came. <laughs> Not really, though. Okay. I don't think anybody came to that. I don't... Just watch it. Yeah. Well, it, it could it could backfire. You could fucking hate it. But me personally, it got me to like something that I had never liked. Because it ended up not being what I thought it was. I'm just going to shut the fuck up. Okay. okay. Nocturnal right. animals. Okay. Yep. That's what's coming next week. So, um, like, share, subscribe, TJD Movie Reviews, iTunes. Uh, does Spotify still do podcasts? Did Spotify yeah. ever do podcasts? Yeah. I, yeah. Were we on Spotify? No. Not to my knowledge. Okay. I'm just asking because I've heard that before. I didn't even know that, but. I'll so. look into it. Okay. Um, but Hopefully anywhere. It's not Christmas when you're hearing this. Yeah. Um, anywhere you get your podcasts YouTube, uh, Libsyn, Facebook, uh, TJD at TJD Movie Reviews at gmail.com, uh, Twitter, and anywhere else. Yeah. Your mom's anus. Anyways. God's list. Yeah. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> Do we want to be on that list? No, we don't. <laughs> I mean, I... God's list of podcasts to listen to. Oh, oh. <laughs> not people to murder no. with an axe. No. How would you feel if Matthew McConaughey came to murder you? Would you be like, I'd ah. make him sit down and be on the pod, and then then we get <laughs> I'd the business. Be like, all but then you, right, all then, right, all right. Then like, but take then, me. <laughs> but then you wouldn't hear his voice. God would get rid of his voice on the pod. Yeah, that would be freaky, wouldn't it? So it'd just be like 90 seconds of silence and yeah. then an axe. Or even creepier, it's like you talking, but you're pausing like someone else is talking with you. Mm-hmm. And that you're would like, be genuinely disturbing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I get that, yeah. You like react. You're, like, you're, you're doing these pauses, though, where you can tell like someone mm-hmm. else would have said something, but there's just nothing there. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, he's either really good at talking to himself, or... He did a great job editing this <laughs> post. Yeah. All right, I think that'll do it for this week. For TJD, I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Bye.